We're still working with the studio funk key switch multi. We know that live mode is active in this factory preset multi because of this indication in the title bar. Clicking on the multi view button, we first go to our mixer view. We see there are eight patches, one loaded into each of the eight parts, each part responding on a separate MIDI channel. When you're in multi view, click on the live button to get to your live mode editing page. At the top of the live mode page is a power switch. This enables us to turn live mode on and off and gives us another visual indication when it's active. The eight parts are represented by these eight slots in the live mode page. Each slot is displaying the name of the patch currently loaded into its respective part. I'll simply use the mouse to select the glissando up articulation in part two. Here's a down slide. With the current settings, selecting any part with the mouse deselects other active parts. That was slide up, and here's up and down. I really like that one. I also love these beautifully multi-sampled harmonics. Now check out the staccato multi-samples. They'll always be staccato notes regardless of my playing style. And of course, you've got to love the X notes layer included. All of these articulations are multi-sampled by key and velocity, including round robin samples for each one of these parts and articulations. Pretty cool, huh? Each is stored as a multi-sampled sound source at the heart of its own patch. Obviously, switching parts with the mouse is not a very comfortable performance technique. There are several ways in live mode to switch between parts. The show menu allows you to switch between a visual indication of the part number, which you could switch with the mouse, key switching or key selection, which is currently displayed, MIDI controllers, or MIDI program change messages, all of which can be used as live mode triggers. In this video, we'll work with key select or MIDI note selection, so I'll display that in the live mode window. With show key select active, the left hand column next to each of the parts displays the name of the MIDI note value currently assigned to trigger that part. You'll notice in our current setup that triggering the note E1 activates the glissando up part and simultaneously deactivates our default articulation, Studio Funk sustains. As soon as I release that note, boop, back to the original. So now I'll play some notes while continuing to hold down the trigger note. When I release the key switching note, part two becomes inactive and my default part one becomes active again. Notes that are already sustaining in one articulation will not be cut off when I switch to another articulation. So I'll play a sustained note, then I'll activate part two with my other hand. My prior note sustains, but I can now trigger glissando notes. I can even sustain one of the glissando notes while releasing the key switch and returning to the studio funk sustains part. Switching articulations in live mode will not cut off any sustaining notes. Now astute observers will have noticed that my host sequencer is listing the first trigger note as E0, while Trillian lists it as E1. We'll fix that by going to our live mode zoom settings. Go to the key select display format option, and we'll select the option for C3 rather than C4 to be displayed when MIDI Note 60 is playing. Closing the live mode zoom window, my host sequencer and Trillian now display MIDI note values in the same fashion. Let's figure out how these assignments were made in case you want to change them or make your own. Simply control or right click on any of the parts in live mode to access the menu for the MIDI learn functions. For instance, the glissando up articulations loaded into part two are triggered by the note E0. Right click on the part to look at our MIDI learn menus and select show learns. Trillian generates a report showing any active learned assignments, although these reports don't follow the changed display convention. Let's see how we can set this up for ourselves. I'll take this glissando up patch and right click on it to display the MIDI learn functions. In this case, I'll disable all previous learned assignments 
by choosing the Unlearn option. Notice how there's nothing displayed anymore in the left-hand column. Right-click again to activate MIDI Note Learn. Trillian will then wait for me to press any note on my keyboard. As soon as I play the note E0, it becomes assigned to Part 2, causing it to activate when depressed. And how do we set Part 1 to turn off for the duration of the time that Part 2 is active? Well, let's check out the learns for Part 1. Right-click on Part 1, Show Learns, drag the report over into this window, and it says E1 Inverted. For each of the parts activated by a particular key switch elsewhere in the multi, the inverted option has been assigned to the Studio Funk part, and all of these learns can coexist together. To create the inverted assignment, right-click on the part and choose MIDI Note Learn Inverted. When you press your key switch assignment, Trillian will learn to turn that part off while the note is being held, and turn the part on when the note is released. We learned in a previous video that Part 1 Studio Funk Sustains can get kind of loud. I could lower the volume here in Part 1's main controls page, or I can go to the Multi Mixer and lower the level of each or all of the parts that I might be using in live mode in one go. So this multi has been set up with Parts 2 through 7 responding to key switches, each of which also turns off Part 1. It's going to be very cool. <laughs>